Hey, good evening. My name is Joel Baxter. Welcome to my channel. It's uh, the first episode. Uh, hopefully I keep this going. It's basically I'm going to review or just talk about some vinyls I pick up every month. Um, I recently got into vinyl. I've been a long time music listener. I'm in my 40s. I basically got into music uh, probably like 13 to 16. I kind of listened to Weird Al. <laughs> And then at age 16, I got my first job and I bought my first uh, Walkman and I bought uh, Poison by Alice Cooper. And actually, it's called Trash by Alice Cooper. I bought it for Poison. And then from there, I kind of discovered Alice Cooper's backlog. I was also into music from my, my brothers. I kind of listened to their vinyls while they were listening to it. Uh, I never actually had vinyl myself other than a Rafi record my aunt got me when I was like 10. I'm from Canada, so Rafi is like a Canadian thing. Um, from there, I kind of got into CDs. I have like 800 CDs. I mostly bought them from like 1993 to 2000, and then I just stopped buying music altogether and kind of went into the download phase. And um, recently, with the vinyl resurgence, I've really got into vinyl, um, and I'm I'm liking it. And um, I'm not a vinyl expert, so if you're kind of a snob and you get pissed off and people touch the vinyl or don't have um, high fidelity setup like I do, or I don't actually, um, this channel is probably not from you. I'm just kind of talking about music, what it means to me. I want to review an album. It's not really, uh, I'm not giving it like a rating of five stars. I'm just kind of maybe rating out why it's important to me and what I bought it for. I generally don't go for gimmicks, but sometimes I kind of do, as you'll see. Um, if it's cool, if I think it's cool, I'll buy it. I kind of have a bigger budget than most people for vinyl, not because I'm wealthy. Um, if you haven't noticed, I'm kind of skinny. I don't know if you can notice on the camera. It adds 20 pounds apparently, but I weigh about 120 pounds right now. I used to weigh 185 about a year and a half ago. Uh, basically, I'm not dying, um, but I think I have something called Asenophilus of the esophagus. I say I think because um, I live in Canada and uh, to get a diagnosis for this thing that I think I have, uh, you have to see a specialist and get a biopsy of your esophagus. And um, I've been waiting like eight months to see someone. Still haven't heard when I'll see someone. It's kind of a pain. Uh, basically, though, with the disease, um, you just it's rare. It's uh, one in 1000 people maybe have it but it's uh, more and more people are having it and they don't know why. And basically what happens is you're, you eat foods that you're allergic to and your throat swells up like maybe two days later. It's like a delayed reaction in your throat. And over time you get strictures and um, abrasions in your throat and it kind of stops food from going down. And even water, it kind of takes a long time to go down. Things like when your throat's swollen, they're not the muscles aren't contracting, and your your throat kind of gets rigid. So even water, when I swallow that, I feel it slowly go down. So on one hand, you don't want to eat, and with me trying to figure out my allergens, I'm cutting out food groups. So basically, I'm only eating like ten foods right now, which are like rice, carrots, uh, cauliflower, coconut oil, uh, rice milk, which is, I guess rice, uh, rice protein powder, hemp powder and potato and chicken. I'm just eating basically that uh, day by day. So I have a smoothie and then two soups every day. And I'm probably getting in like 1400 calories a day. Uh, if I eat more, I kind of get sick and I throw up. So um, with that came a lot of kind of isolation because I can't really hang out with people. I can't go to bars, drink beer because I've cut out wheat. And um, I'm not looking for sympathy here or anything. Uh, I just kind of wanted to start a channel basically to talk about vinyl because I wanted to be belong to some sort of community. Not that I'm looking for you to like me because I'm sick. Um, I just, you know, my interests before were kind of like craft beer and just hanging out with friends and eating pizza and stuff. And I can't do that now. And I'm not lonely. Like I have friends. But I kind of stopped hanging out with them because... Um, it's just, you kind of, when you're not getting many calories, you kind of feel tired and stuff. And I, you're kind of sick. You don't want to do stuff that often. I kind of go to bed early. Uh, so this isn't a disease show. I'm just 
wanted to um, start off with that because you might go, oh, you could get that album for like 10 bucks. Why didn't you get that, you stupid moron? But uh, I just kind of get it as a treat to myself because I used to reward myself with like food at the end of the week. Like, oh, I survived the work week. I'm going to get pizza and share it. Now it's, I'm going to get this vinyl album. Um, if I was smart, I'd be paying off my mortgage. <laughs> um, but when I was really sick, you know, I kind of had days where I didn't think I'd even survive. So not that I was close to death or anything. It just, um, when my swelling got bad and I didn't understand it, it just felt like someone was strangling me all day and I had like six months of just a constant strangling feeling. So enough about that. I'm just going to get into the vinyl because we're five minutes and 40 seconds into this thing. So, uh, yeah, I picked up about 10 vinyls for October. And I'm just going to, again, describe why I liked it, why I picked it up, uh, what's cool about it. Uh, this channel is kind of more um, influenced by uh, Metal Jesus. Um, he kind of got me into the vinyl, watching his videos. And then there's a Canadian channel called um, Channel 33 RPM. A uh, guy in Edmonton, he's really cool. He's got some cool stuff. And there's another guy called Naz Nomad. Uh, shout out to him. Um, he's a pretty cool guy. We're all about the same age. And I think we all have kind of the same musical interests. There's other channels out there too, and I'll probably name drop them in future episodes. I don't really comment on their videos. I just enjoy watching them, and I just thought I'd mention them. So the first album I, I picked up, and I'm not going to show you the vinyl because it's in my player right now. It just came in the mail. Um, I can't really see if you can see this. Ah, I guess you can. It's uh, Ziggy Stardust uh, by David Bowie. I just noticed this says K West, and I'm sure this joke's been made a thousand times. And I bet you Kanye West thinks this album's about him. Uh, so this is classic Bowie. This is probably his most popular album. Um, I bought it because I had it on cassette. So generally, I don't buy albums I have on CD. I am the world's biggest hypocrite, so I probably will have some vinyls here that I do have on CD. Um, I'm just... Because it's Halloween, I have a... For the Halloween season, I have a Hellraiser mug, and I can't have caffeine either, so this is just chamomile tea. So, again, this is kind of like low production video. I'm um, not going to really edit it, because if I do, I probably won't ever put it up. And you just want to see the vinyl, so I'm just going to shut up again and talk about this. Um, so, I kind of got into Bowie, listening to my brother, listening to his albums. Uh, he had, he didn't have a big Bowie collection. He had, uh, I think it's called Changes Bowie, or Change Some Bowie. It was his greatest hits album, so I knew the hits. Uh, and I specifically bought this album on cassette as a, a university student for um, Ziggy Stardust and Surrogate City. But I learned to love Starman. I don't know if that was a single. I wasn't really familiar with Starman. I love that song. And I loved uh, Rock and Roll Suicide. And um, I haven't really listened to this album in about 20 years. So, And I just got it today. I bought it on Amazon. Uh, what I do on Amazon is like I throw everything I want in a cart. And then I just watched the price. So this came down to 25 bucks from like 33 bucks. So I'm like, oh yeah, I'll get it. I know you can probably pick this up for 5 to 10. But um, this is by uh, Parlophone, I believe. Parlophone Records. And I was impressed with their other Bowie reissues. It's on 180 grand vinyl. I know that doesn't make a difference to some people. The yeah, album is just on black vinyl. And uh, I haven't really listened to it enough because I just got this like an hour ago. And I never really listened to it very well on cassette either. I just kind of usually fast forwarded to the parts I wanted or I threw it on a mixtape. So I'm really excited to get more into this album. And I'll be listening to it a lot probably in November. Uh, the next album I picked up is definitely for the Halloween season. It is uh, from Waxwork Records. It's the soundtrack to Friday 13th Part 5. Uh, all these albums are in no order. I just kind of threw them together. So I know most people save their soundtracks to the end. You get this one second. So this one, um, they had a sale, a waxwork. This is usually 35 bucks. It was 25 American. But by the time you get it up here, it's like 50 bucks. Um, beautiful cover art. I really like the, the lightning behind uh, the eyes there. And then he's got his classic weapon he uses in the, the movie. And the Friday 13th game, if you've been playing that. Uh, the end's really cool. It's got Reggie, and I forget the girl's name. I haven't watched this movie in a while. I think his name's Reggie. Um, 
it's got, I guess, the real Jason, not the fake Jason. Spoilers if you haven't seen part five. Uh, and then, I don't know if you can see this right, but it's kind of got um, Jason with his uh, gardening shears. Kind of reminds me of the burning, actually. I don't know if you've seen the burning, but that guy had gardening shears. And I'll just pull out one vinyl. Again, I'll probably touch the record with my fingertips, so don't freak out. I'll try and do it off camera. It's in a uh, black sleeve. I don't know if it's polylined. Could be polylined. I'm not an expert. Doesn't really feel like it is. And then this is on uh, transparent vinyl. Uh, so you kind of got, I don't know, I guess it's like a medical symbol because the one guy's an ambulance driver. And then you have um, the shears there. I watched this movie a lot as a teenager. I bought it on VHS. I didn't buy any of the others on VHS, but I bought this one. Um, I don't know why. I think I bought it on VHS because I saw all the other ones, but the other ones were shown on TV a lot, and Part 5 wasn't. I was really hoping the uh, the song the girl dances to, I think it's called His Eyes, was on here. And it wasn't. And that kind of sucks. It's my only complaint about this album. So it doesn't have that song. It does have these two um, tracks on Side D called Heavy Metal and Punk Funk that are written by Harry Manfred Dini. They're kind of like rock song tracks. Don't like them. They're kind of... Sorry, Harry. Um, what's his name? Harry. I like your scores, but I just didn't like those songs that much. Probably because they're kind of dated. I might grow into them. I've only listened to this like twice. But I wish instead of having those two songs, they would have the, uh, the uh, rock song. That's my only complaint about this record. I love it otherwise. Um, yeah, it cost me 50 bucks, but it's a nice treat for me. It's Halloween season. I got part four. We'll talk about one day. Plan to get one to three when they reissue them. And yeah, it kind of makes me happy. And I really like score because I, I listen to that music a lot. Uh, this one I got is uh, Skid Row Beside Ourselves. Uh, basically, as the story goes, I don't know if this is true or not, but there's five songs on here and each member of Skid Row, which has Sebastian Bach during this phase, this came out, I think, after Slave to the Grind. But um, I think these are B-sides to their first album, and Slave to the Grind. I could be wrong about that. Some people say they were B-sides uh, to their album after this. I forget what that's called. I never got that. I heard it's a good album. I'll probably pick it up if it comes out on vinyl. Uh, but my Skid Row knowledge only really goes to um, this album. Because they kind of stopped playing them on much music at that time. and Because grunge took over. So I like this one a lot. Uh, I remember on Power 30 they played Psychotherapy a lot. I didn't realize it had uh, Tammy Down from uh, Faster Pussycat singing on it. I think it does. Yep, background vocals, Tammy Down. Apparently there is a video for Delivering the Goods by Judas Priest, which they cover on this. Never saw that. They also cover uh, Come, on and Love Me, Come On and Love Me by Paul Stanley, uh, What You're Doing by Rush, and Little Wing by Hendrix. Um, this is a Rocktober from Rhino. Um, kind of pissed off with the Rocktober right now. I'll probably explain that a little bit later. Uh, this is on gray vinyl. It's kind of cool. Uh, the Atlantic label is what you see there. And um, again, I picked this up because I saw it on Channel 33. Uh, he showed it again in his previous episode. And I'm like, oh, I should really get that. It did cost me like $24. Um, I saw it on sale for like 19 not too long ago. But I never picked it up. And um, it's got a nice little sleeve here uh, with the band. And then the back is just um, pure black. And I'm showing you the records too because that's one thing I always kind of want to see when I, I see reviews. So I'm making a point to show you kind of what's inside. I didn't show you what was in Bowie. And the, the Jason album didn't come with anything, which was kind of disappointing. I thought they'd have like a little little something something in there um, other than a sticker I I just wanted like some information about you know the recording process or whatnot a little history because part four came with that just a little bit of history uh, it didn't but I guess you know it's part five what can you really say it's like okay we're kind of doing the same soundtrack over and over again here I guess the same notes because they are repetitive the soundtracks excuse me while I have another sip of tea Uh, this next album I was really 
I thought about it a lot getting it and I finally decided to again I don't really go for the record store day kind of stuff I don't it's kind of hyped up and it's just I get that they want people to go to independent record stores and support them I don't really have an independent record store near me I'm not gonna wait in line I'm just not that guy um, I just rather get on Amazon it's a convenience thing I do go to independent record stores kind of nearby when they're not busy that's how I support them uh, I do get lost stuff on Amazon just because it's cheaper than my independent record store but my independent record store has been in business for 40 years they're not going anywhere until the guy retires which is probably going to be soon you can insult me in the comments all you want if you offer a good service if you offer good records you're going to probably survive I know they have families to feed and whatnot I'm just babbling on but uh, the price of vinyl is kind of expensive right now so they're doing well is what I'm trying to say uh, I typically buy new because used at my uh, record store um, which I'll talk about later I'll save that for later but yeah I typically buy new because um, there's usually just like maybe a five to ten dollar price difference and if I can get something that's been 40 years old 10 bucks more money and not have it smell like cigarette smoke or mildew I'll probably do that so yeah this next record is uh, Bowie now and I have it was a record store day exclusive I got for 20 bucks about I guess eight months after it came out because record store day was in March April I can't do the math it's six to eight months later um, this is just a compilation of low and heroes uh, so it's got V2 Schneider probably said that wrong always crashing in the same car sons of the silent age breaking glass Nucleon, Speed of Life, Joe the Lion, What in the World, Blackout, Weeping Wall, Secret Life of Arabia. Um, and it's basically kind of just a compilation album. Um, I read about this on uh, Discogs, and they said a lot of people had a problem with Side B, where it skips, and I do have that problem too, which sucks. Um, but I knew that kind of going in. It's not an album I'm going to spin a lot because I'll probably spin the original. They said if you have like a good system and you clean the record really well, it won't skip. So there's that. I'm not too concerned. I don't really plan to resell these things or care about the value. I'm mostly obsessed about this album though because it's on white vinyl and I just love white vinyl. And um, there's a the label there. Same thing on the other side. Um, so that's why I bought it. And uh, basically, this is um, a reissue of something that came out in the 70s. And it's kind of rare-ish. And I probably won't resell it. I also like the album cover. I know it's pretty simple, but I just like that cover. I thought about this thing, and then I saw it in the value bin, and then I waited like two months. And uh, they had three in the clearance bin, and then they went down to one. I'm like, I better pick this up. They also had uh, Skid Row in the clearance bin when I saw this one originally I didn't get it and then so I ended up getting on Amazon paying a bit more so this is just has like a picture of Bowie this isn't like a sleeve or anything it's just a, an insert and then you have some information on the back and I gotta really speed things up here so I'm not gonna properly put it back in the album I'll put it, do it later uh, next one is an uh, album my brothers had growing up and uh, I was watching Family Guy and they kind of featured this album and I thought it was so funny because it kind of had that effect on me as a kid. Uh, Stewie was really afraid of this album cover and I was afraid of this album cover as a kid and it's Queen News of the World. Uh, so you got that robot creature. I probably won't show you the inside of this because um, I really got to speed things up here. Um, so yeah, you got that artwork. And then you have um, the robot killing the people. So this really scared me, particularly um, because it's Brian May in the blood. I never really watched horror at this age. I watch a lot of horror now. But at this age, horror was kind of new to me. I maybe saw Jaws and Amityville Horror, and then this kind of freaked me out. But um, I always thought it was cool. I uh, haven't really got into this too much. This album is known for We Will Rock You and We Are the Champions, which, you know, you've heard a billion times. Sheer Heart Attack, which was the name of another Queen album. I'm not a Queen expert, so I don't know if that is uh, a nod to the other album or a repeat of that song. What I really liked, though, was uh, Spread Your Wings. That was probably my favorite song on this, this album. 
um, it was kind of new to me. I might have heard it maybe as a kid, and uh, rehearing it might have um, triggered something, a memory that I haven't really grasped yet, but I really like that song. I don't think it's on any greatest hits. Uh, next album I picked up, and I won't show you too much of this, but it's, I can't even pronounce it. It's Smashing Pumpkins, uh, PC's Iskarit, I think. Uh, not really familiar with this album. I was a Smashing Pumpkins fan during the grunge age, but I only knew um, uh, their second album. I can't really think what it is. It's got the, uh, oh yeah, Siamese Dream, I think. Yeah, that one. And then Melancholy and Adore were the only albums I had. So this is kind of new to me. I'm familiar with Landside because it's on the greatest hits album. Um, nothing really outstanding about this album. It's kind of... Um, Uh, nothing really worth showing. If you're a Smashing Pumpkins fan, you probably like it. I kind of like it. It's kind of melancholy-ish. I guess this is a collection of B-sides off of uh, Siamese Dream, if I'm correct. Maybe Gish. Not really sure. Um, what I've heard of this, I've only spent it twice. I like. I just have to spend more time with it, which I will. Uh, next album I got was Marilyn Manson. It's uh, I think it's Pale Emperor. Yep, Pale Emperor. So this isn't his latest, it's his one before. Um, I bought this because of Killing Strangers, uh, John Wick. Um, and I also was familiar with Third Day of a Seven Day Binge and uh, Deep Six. So those are the first three songs on the first side of uh, this double LP. I didn't even know I was getting a double LP, I got it on uh, Amazon. So that's the label there. And it comes in this transparent uh, label. Yeah, so it's on a double LP, so I was kind of happy about that. And um, really cool album. Um, I think Manson now always does songs with a drum beat that you can strip to. He says, not that I strip to music, but it's kind of got like a strip club kind of drum beat. Doo -doo, doo -doo. Song, that's my weak ass imitation. Um, I was a big Manson fan as uh, a university student. Um, I guess it was at 21 when I picked up Portrait of American Family and it kind of blew my mind. Uh, I guess Manson, you know, he was at one period, you loved him or hate him, and uh, he was very influential. And when he came out, uh, he captivated a lot of a lot of kids, I guess goth kids, and um, Later on, uh, a lot more people with um, Antichrist Superstar, the beautiful people. I liked Mechanical Animals a lot, and then I found with uh, Hollywood, I think it's Hollywood, his fourth album, fourth label album, I know he's had albums before that with the Spooky Kids, but with that album, I, the songs were okay, and then the Golden Age of Grotesque I liked, and then I just kind of stopped listening to Manson. Um, it wasn't the Columbine thing, I just didn't find the music as engaging. Not that I really listened to him to really give him a fair shot. Uh, but with the John Wick music, um, I was like, oh, Manson's kind of relevant again. And that album's really interesting. I like it a lot. And his latest I liked, I have that on vinyl as well. And um, kind of getting back into Manson. My favorite album, though, is probably Portrait. I know a lot of people love Antichrist, but Portrait was really where I kind of I just like the goofiness of it, and I liked um, Daisy, I guess, Daisy Berkowitz. I don't know his real name. I know he passed away recently, but I liked his guitar playing a lot. And um, I think he has Tyler Bates doing guitar on his newest album. And uh, I like Nine Inch Nails at the same time, and I think Manson's kind of just doing stuff that's a little more interesting than Nine Inch Nails right now. I did get Bad Witch by Trent, and... It's good, but I don't really remember the songs too well. And it seems more of a tribute to Bowie. Or Manson just kind of... It feels very Manson-ish, is what I'm trying to say. And he's back to making art, I guess, again. And I think with his parents passing, he was kind of influenced to put out um, just better quality albums. Not that his other stuff is garbage, it just... I think this stuff's just resonating with a lot more people, and I think um, Manson is just creatively in a better spot right now. And I kind of worry about that guy. I don't want him dying 
I don't know if he's an act sometimes or if he's a real thing. I think he's somewhere in between. But he's a guy I worry about dying too early because I think he has a lot of output to put out. I know a lot of people think Manson sucks. I know he misses a lot of concerts. I think the guy has some troubles, but he's entertaining. And he's living a life of, of a rock star. Not that that's something to glorify or anything, but, um, you know, he's kind of, he's got that dangerous edge to him. And uh, I do worry about the guy. I'd rather him be a little more professional so he lives longer. Uh, like Rob Zombie is pure professional. He puts out a lot of stuff. But uh, not to insult Rob Zombie, but his latest stuff just doesn't sync well with me. It's it's okay. But, um, and I like his movies. I like uh, Devil's Rejects quite a bit and uh, Has of a Thousand Corpses. And I even like Halloween. And Halloween 2, I kind of liked. Kind of. And The Witch Movie, I kind of liked. And 31, I kind of liked. I'm babbling here. But, you know, Rob Zombie's real professional, doesn't drink. He's a vegan. Marilyn Manson. Kind of probably does a lot of drugs still, drinks a lot. And um, I don't know if that influences the creative process or not. Man, this video is long, so I'm just going to shut up. Uh, next album is from another professional who's putting out some really cool stuff still. Uh, I bought this album on a whim. It's a live album. Not really a whim, but I kind of looked at the set list and I'm like, oh, I won't get that. But the vinyl is like 31 bucks Canadian. And I'm a big fan of this guy, and it is uh, Alice Cooper, live at the Olympia in Paris. And when I saw this set list, I'm like, oh, great. School's at I'm 18. Love it to dead. I love the dead. Um, Dollar Dwight Fry. Songs we've heard a billion times before on his other 12 live albums. Yada, yada, yada. But Alice Cooper is a master, and he knows what we want to hear. And when I hear these albums, I'm like 16-year-old again going, yeah, school's at So uh, this does have some rare cuts on it. It's got Brutal Planet, which is nice to hear. It's got The World Needs Guts. It's got um, Hail Up Flies, which I don't think we've... We might have had on a few other albums. I remember one tour he did this album and the uh, the drummer was doing a solo and then the uh, guitarist, I think two, one of the guitarists or two of the guitarists came out and they started banging on the drums too. It was really cool. Um, if you're a Cooper fan, you'll like that. Um, Women of Miss Mass Distraction. I never really liked that song. Some people say they love it live. I still haven't gotten into it yet. I might at one point. Probably just have to hear it more. I think I said the world need guts. World need guts. Um, that's on here. Paranomic, par, para, paranoic personality is the only album track off his latest album, which is kind of a disappointment. Would have liked to have heard more, but what can you do? He knows people are there for the hits, and this album rocks. His new lineup is just awesome. Um, I didn't even realize I was getting this on colored vinyl. Uh, this is really professionally put together. Like it looks cool. Uh, it's got cool sleeves, like really cool stuff. And um, this one is on white vinyl, and the other is on red. I'll just show you white because we're going on like a half hour here. So these have really cool labels. I should show you. The, I'm going to show you the other ones too. I have to because this, uh, this, this album just rocks, man. And uh, if you're a Cooper fan, you're on the fence. You're like, oh, I've heard these songs before. Just pick this album up. You'll like it. You'll seriously like it. Uh, even if you don't get the colored vinyl, you'll like it. So here we got the other um, sleeve. It's got some credits. I just kind of showed them to you. So it's got uh, Dead Baby on it. And then this has um, a mask. Really handsome records. Really well done. Um, I love this album. I'm going to play it probably as soon as this uh, video ends. My apologies too. I thought this would take like 12 minutes. My other videos will probably be shorter. I just really, again, wanted to show you everything on these albums. Uh, this next album I got is another Record Store Day exclusive. I paid 24 bucks for it. It's only got three songs on it. Probably stupid for buying it. It wasn't even on sale. I saw that Metal Jesus had it. And I was thinking about getting their box set because this is on it. But rather than pay 180 bucks... Paying like 24 bucks is better. And it's Canadian prices, so that's probably like 16 American or something. I think you're like, I think we pay like, um, you pay 76% of what we pay. So this is uh, Def Leppard's EP. And this is a recreation. I think they've reissued this a few times. Uh, this is, so the original uh, Steve, 
not Steve Clark, Joe Elliott put together with his mom in his apartment. They put together a thousand handmade out shows. I don't know if it's a seven inch. This one's a 12 inch. Um, so he did that. I'll show you the back. And uh, how to insert. I'll show you the insert. I won't show you the album though. It's just on black vinyl. You can see the um, the album on like a box set review. I just kind of running out of time. Uh, not my box set review, but others have the box set review, and they'll they'll show it to you. Uh, so yeah, the the other guitarist on here is Pete Willis. I'm not like a Def Leppard um, expert. I'm more familiar with uh, Def Leppard from Pyromania to Hysteria and Retroactive. And um, those ones I do have on uh, CD in their greatest hits. So uh, the drummer is Frank Noon. So it's not uh, the regular drummer. I think he did come on later. It's got Rick Savage, who I believe is with Def Leppard still. Again, not an expert, but I'm pretty sure I recognize that name. Sorry to Rick Savage. Um, sorry to the drummer, whose name I can't remember right now either. Um, but I know who Joe Elliott, Joe Elliott is, and I, uh, I know who Steve Clark is. And... Um, I think Steve Clark, yeah, Steve Clark's the one who passed away. So, yeah, he was on this album. Uh, and Pete Willis, I think, uh, his current guitarist took over for, um, uh, what is his name? Phil Collin. Not Phil Collins, but Phil Collin. Yeah, um, another vegan who's, um, in great shape for his age. I think he just recently had a kid, too. Ah, okay. Second to last record. Uh, again... This is why I don't buy used. I saw this used for 25 bucks, and then I bought it for 27 bucks on sale. It's normally like 33. It's a Kiss Dynasty. I bought it for um, Sure Know Something and uh, 2000 Man. And I was made for loving you. I like, but I've heard too much. It's on my radio station at work all the time, so I kind of get sick of that. It is Discoish. It's a song Gene here hates playing. This is here. Um. This comes with a poster. I'm not going to undo it because you won't see it on the camera. There's other unboxings of this, so you'll be able to see it. Why I bought it was this custom label. Uh, it doesn't have the Casablanca label you normally see with the palm trees or whatever. It's got this cool label. I like it. The poster is just basically this um, stretched out. Not Kiss's best album, but not their worst. In high school, we thought this was like the disco album, so we were like, ah, oh, this is the worst friggin' Kiss album there is. But uh, they proved me wrong with that. Um, they have some records that I just don't like. Like, Caught in the Shade is probably, my, in my opinion, the worst album. It's got two, three good songs. I have to get another listen, but I bought it on cassette in high school, and I just never listened to the thing. I'd always listen to Destroyer. And then they came out with Revenge, which I think is an amazing album. And um, I listened to Love Gun quite a bit and Alive. Uh, my brothers had that on my own. We listened to that a lot. Uh, but I'll, I'll talk about Kiss later because I'm slowly getting all their albums on vinyl. Uh, final album is uh, Kiss Al Cooper Killer. Or it could be Killer. So, no, it's Killer. Um, here's the back. I thought I was getting like the Rocktober. This is my Rocktober rant by Rhino. I'm in Canada. Uh, they had a misprint with this in Easy Action, where the, um, the Easy Action album would have been in here, labeled Killer, but when you played it, it would be Easy Action and vice versa. So I thought they would have reissued or fixed that problem, and I thought I was getting a, an album on um, red and black vinyl. This ended up just being a black vinyl. There's no uh, calendar inside. It's just a gatefold. Nothing to really complain about there. It's got basically the same picture on the inside, though, as the outside. And, um, again, it's nothing to really complain about there. This album sounds great. I think this is a 90, uh, or 2013 reissue. It doesn't really say. I was just hoping that they were October one, but I don't think they ever reissued it. And anything I saw on eBay is going for a lot of money. And then Cooper recently reissued, um, From the Inside and, uh, two others, Whiskey and Lace and Goes to Hell. On colored vinyl. I really want to get those because I got all the other Rocktober and other Rhino multi-colored vinyls and I just kind of wanted to complete my collection and I can't get that in Canada. I can buy it on eBay 
But for me to buy all three albums on eBay, it would cost um, 140 Canadian. And then um, Canada Post tends to lose one out of every five albums I order, or something gets damaged, one or the other. So it's just not worth me risking that money. And I guess they didn't, no one in Canada is selling it. I can't find it anywhere. So I'm kind of disappointed with that. Um, I hope to pick it up eventually, even if it's on black vinyl. I'd really like uh, from the inside on black vinyl or colored with the inserts and stuff. My brother had that growing up. I used to love looking at that album. I just would like to look at it again. And uh, yeah, that is it for my vinyl pickup for October. I have one more coming. This is October 27th. I have um, Disaster Peace is the musician. It's um, it's a soundtrack to, uh, what is it now? I don't know why I can't think of it. It's that movie, uh, It Follows. It's a soundtrack to that. I picked that up today um, on Amazon. I've got one day shipping out for free because I'm a Prime member. So it's coming tomorrow. I just wanted to get this video out there. So we'll cover that in November. It was uh, 10 bucks cheaper than normal on Amazon, so I grabbed it. And I'm thinking about getting um, Mondo's Halloween 1 Castlevania reissue for uh, Simon's Quest. And then the Castlevania Symphony Night soundtrack. It would probably cost me 50 bucks per album. Don't really have the budget for it, so I'm probably going to wait to Black Friday. If I can't get it, I can't get it. They'll get reissued eventually. Um, I'd rather buy it on sale and save like 10 bucks American, which will save me like 15 bucks with duties and uh, exchange rate and all that stuff. So yeah, that's my video. 36 minutes. Uh, we covered a lot. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. I don't care. Don't follow me. Follow me. Whatever you want. I'm not here to make money. I'm just here to like kind of talk about albums. And uh, I think I did that quite well. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe I babble, but uh, if you're interested in the music I'm in, you probably find something here interesting or something you can complain about or something you can talk about or enjoy. So, yeah, whatever. Bye-bye.